Hey guys, and welcome to a very unshaved, but hopefully very exciting Blender tutorial. Now this, that's a cube. Right now, you can see the surface or the skin of this cube. In Blender, however, if you want to create effects such as smoke or fire or clouds or volumetric lights like God rays, oh, thank you, you will have to use something called volumetric rendering. Blender does have different types of volumetric rendering and they do behave quite different to the surface or the skin rendering of your meshes and therefore, because I want to create some tutorials for smoke and fire, some of the really cool stuff, I felt like I really needed a primer, the basics of how does volumetric rendering even work in Blender. This is going to be an intermediate tutorial and if that throws you off because the video says for absolute beginners, just like if you were to go to a driving course where they're going to teach you how to flip your car, they're probably going to assume that you know how to drive. I'm going to assume that you know the basics of Blender. If you're just getting started, you're just getting into Blender, I've got tons of beginner tutorials and some Udemy training that I'm going to link you down below. So go and check all of that out first. But now, before that does anything worse, let's jump right into the tutorial. Welcome to the exciting world of Blender. I have a really simple scene set up here to demonstrate how volumetric rendering works in Blender. As always, if you want to follow along, you'll be able to download this file from our website. So simply go to surfacedstudio.com forward slash downloads and you'll be able to download this blend file and follow along. But quite honestly, you'll be able to follow this tutorial with anything that you may have. Now, the setup is really simple. I've just got three monkey heads here, kind of inspired by the three wise monkey in Nico Japan, the hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil monkeys. I also have two big planes set up here and on both of these planes, if I go to the materials tab over on the right hand side in the properties panel, I've got an emission shader or an emission material applied. So these two act as ginormous diffuse light panels. And if I hit F12 and render this out, and by the way, for this tutorial, it is really important that you are using the cycles rendering engine if you're not working off my sample file. But now that that's rendered, we've got our three disembodied monkey heads floating just above the ground and there's plenty of light in the scene to really see what is going on. Let's press escape to return to our 3D view and I'm going to split my view vertically. So it's going to make another view over on the left hand side here and change the one on the left over to rendered. Hide the tool shelf by pressing T, let's zoom in and we're finally ready to get going. Let's select the monkey over on the right hand side and in the materials tab again on this little sphere here, right now he has no material. Let's assign a new material to this monkey and let's call this material monkey1. Under the surface options you have a shader assigned to it right now that is the diffuse BSDF. Obviously, you can click on the shader and change it to anything else that you want. For example, you could say I want a translucent shader. So now the monkey is kind of semi-transparent or you can change it over to the principled BSDF, which kind of combines all of the other shaders in one and gives you a huge amount of really powerful options. And you can say, ah, oh, my monkey is a bit darker. Maybe it's a bit more metallic and it's a bit more shiny. And you know, you can kind of tweak your material in any way that you want. And what you're seeing right now is a surface shader. It's shading or it's rendering the surface, the skin of this model. This is great for any object in your scene that actually has a hard surface. However, things like smoke, fog, fire, or you know, dusty rooms where the light kind of creates rays, they don't have a hard surface. It's essentially just a volumetric effect. For that, if we collapse the surface tab over on the right hand side, Blender has volumetric shaders and those ones are applied under the volume tab in your materials panel. First, however, let's pop the surface tab back open and let's change the surface shader from principal BSDF or whatever you had assigned before to nothing. And for that, let's just simply select remove. And on the left hand side, you can see that Blender now renders nothing. We have no shader. It has no surface shader and it has no volume shader. So this monkey is just a blob of nothingness. So now let's come over to the materials again. Just make sure that you do have your monkey selected and you are on this new monkey material that we've created. And let's change this volume shader from none. And again, you can add any shader. However, most of the shaders, when you apply them to a volume, won't actually render anything here. It's just a transparent monkey. Still got a shadow, but the monkey itself is gone. Same with the principal BSDF, the monkey isn't even visible. However, Blender has two types of volumetric shaders that are really, really useful for anything, well, volumetric. Those ones are, for me, they're kind of at the very bottom, called volume absorption and volume scatter. 
By the way, Blender 2.8, which is coming out pretty soon, is also going to introduce a principled volume shader, which, much like the principled BSDF, simply combines the different volume shaders into one super shader, if you wish, but we don't have that here. So for now, let's simply apply a volume absorption shader. Now, this may be a little bit hard to see, but let me zoom in just a little bit more to this monkey. And if you look really closely, you can see a little bit of like a, like a ghostly outline of a monkey. This is now the volume, the inside of this monkey head being rendered by Blender. Right now that is a little bit hard to see, but we can increase the density of this volume and therefore make it more visible. Over in the materials tab, under this volume absorption shader, you have two options. You can change the color of this volume or you can change the density. First, let's check up the density to maybe five. Immediately, you can see that the volume of our monkey head has gotten darker. And the way the volume absorption node works in cycles, remember there's light rays essentially being cast around your scene and whatever those light rays hit turns bright. They're essentially simulating real light bouncing around your scene. The volume absorption node, however, whenever a light enters this particular volume for our monkey head, there's a chance that that light ray won't make it out the other side, that it gets absorbed into the volume. The thicker, the more dense, your volume is, the more likely rays are going to be absorbed and the darker the volume will appear. So if you check this density up to let's say 50, this monkey is almost black. It's actually just the areas where the mesh itself is actually quite thin. There's very little volume, like in the ears, where the lights still penetrate. The core, where the most of the center, the biggest part of the volume for the monkey head is, is just all dark because all of the light that enters here just gets absorbed and vanishes. Let's bring the density back down to something more reasonable, maybe 10. Let's change the color of this volume. Simply use the color picker. Let's maybe let's make it light blue. So now you have a light blue volume. And the cool thing is you can actually see that the shadow is a little bit blue as well on the outside here where the rays kind of penetrate the ear, pick up some of that blue as they pass through this volume. So some of the shadow is now also tinted blue. So that is the volume absorption shader in Blender. Let's move over to this monkey hat here at the end and let's look at the volume scatter shader. Let's select the monkey hat in our 3D view. Let's create a new material. Let's call this one monkey 2. And again, right now, by default, it just has a surface shader on it, which is a diffuse BSDF, which is why you're seeing the skin of the monkey hat. Let's remove the shader again just to make sure it's no longer there. And let's come and apply a volume shader. And for this one, let's come down to the very bottom. I'm going to apply a volume scatter shader. Now, this kind of looks like what we had happen with the volume absorption shader. We kind of just got this ghostly volumetric representation of our monkey head. And again, the volume scatter has a color and a density property. And yes, if I jack up the density to maybe 10, that will get a whole lot darker. But you may notice that this actually does look slightly different and it seems to have a bit more, a bit more shape. And that is because the volume scatter shader actually works quite different to the volume absorption. The volume scatter shader, what that will do when a light enters this volume, it will essentially get diffused. It bounces off in different directions. So it's essentially much more useful for things like dust particles in the air, like, you know, creating light rays. And I'll show you that in a minute. When the light hits this volume, the particles in this volume, it bounces in different directions. Maybe I'll bring the density down to maybe five or so, just so we can see through this volume a little bit more. And again, the volume scatter shader has a color, but one thing that will happen with this color, and this confuses a lot of people, if you now select a color, let's say we select red, your volume will suddenly turn blue, except you've got a little bit of red happening just here on the outline. And the reason for that is that now, red light, only the red light entering this monkey head will get scattered. All of the other colors won't be affected. So what's essentially happening, if I pop open this color picker, by setting the color of this volume scatter shader to red means that only the red colors, the red light is being affected and scattered. Therefore, the complementary colors, the blues, are the ones that you can actually see. If I was to change this to blue, then the color of the volume scatter would be red. So let's change this to blue. And no surprise, now most of the color is red. The last thing that the volume scatter has that the volume absorption does not have is this option. Let me just pull this out a little bit called anisotropy. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. If not, English isn't my first language, so I'm just going to use that as an excuse. I could have looked it up. I'm pretty sure it's anisotropy. What this does is this essentially determines the direction in which those light rays are going to be scattered. 
an anisotropy of zero means that a light ray hitting one of the imaginary particles in this volume is going to be scattered into any direction. So it essentially creates more of a diffuse look, more a grayish color if this volume was really dense. Now, the effect can be a bit difficult to see, especially if you have a very well-lit scene. It's usually a bit more obviously if you have very singular light sources. But essentially, if you jack the anisotropy up to one, it does look quite different because what happens now is that any light ray, for example, the ones coming from this big diffuse light at the back, hitting that monkey are going to mostly be scattered forward. So they're kind of flying forward through. And an anisotropy of one is usually used for liquids like water, the very clear um, volumes essentially. An anisotropy of minus one is essentially going to do the opposite. Any light hitting this monkey from the back is essentially going to be most likely going to be scattered backwards. So there's less diffusing happening within the volume. But again, it's a bit hard to see here because we have so much light in the scene already. But usually I leave this on zero, but there are reasons why you may want to jack this up to one or minus one. Depends a bit on your use case. Now let's quickly return to our blue absorption shader monkey head. And as I said, you can have both a volume metric shader and a surface shader at the same time. Let's make the density of this volume just a little bit less. Maybe let's turn this to five or something. So we just got this bluish volume on the inside. And let's also add a surface shader to this monkey head. The surface shader I'm going to pick is the glass BSDF. So let's apply that to this volume. And now what you're getting, you're essentially getting this glass effect, but some of the light that enters this glass gets absorbed and turns into this blue color. So this is kind of like having a marble with, you know, a little bit of that blue liquid material on the inside where the light hits it. So that's why the ears of the monkey are still really nice. Crystal clear looks very glassy and it's got this blue volume on the inside. Now you can shade the glass itself. So for example, I could say, I don't actually want this volume absorption. Let's remove that. So now we have clear glass. I can say, I'm just gonna tint my glass blue. However, this actually has the effect as if all of the glass was blue colored to begin with, like the surface itself, because the surface shader for glass is blue. But what if you just want the volume, the inside of that to be blue? For that, you can obviously make the actual surface glass white, so it's nice and crystal clear, and then add a volume absorption shader. And this one then can have some color like bluish. So now, wherever the volume is thicker, or again, you can jack up the density to whatever you want, that light is being absorbed and turns into blue. And this kind of looks a little bit, depending on the type of glass, it just looks a whole lot more natural. Now, very quickly, you have this volume absorption and this volume scatter node. And in quite a lot of situations, you want to use both of them together. And that is usually when you're dealing with smoke or fire or clouds, something that both absorbs light, but also just scatters it. And it's, you know, nice and diffuse and the light just bounces everywhere. What I'm going to do very quickly, I haven't touched on this, but obviously this is kind of the primer for all of the fun stuff. Let's select the middle monkey head, come down into the header of the 3D view, select object, come up to quick effects, and let's select quick smoke. This is going to create a very simple smoke simulation. I'm going to cover this in much more detail later on. I just want to show you some of the volumetric rendering that happens with these things. Make sure you're at the very beginning of your timeline. Let's just press Alt and A or press the play button to play forward a little bit and let's pause the simulation and you can see that Blender has now created some smoke right here. Let's come over and let this render out. This is going to go a little bit slower now, but this essentially is a volumetric shader. So this whole effect, this smoke is being rendered by a volumetric shader. In fact, it's actually more than a single shader. It's both a volume absorption combined with the volume scatter because again, smoke kind of has both of those attributes and it just looks much more realistic. If you come over to the right hand side into the material panel under the volume you will see that there's actually multiple shaders now attached to this material and you can't really do that through the interface here you need to use the node editor and i haven't touched on this yet but just very quickly just because it's kind of cool to see let's split this 3d view it's going to grab the top right hand side and pull this down let's split this horizontally let's change the top view over to the node editor and obviously with this volume still selected, with the smoke still selected, let's zoom in here a little bit. Actually, let me press N to hide that panel. And this looks quite confusing if you've never seen it before. And I, I will go over all of this in much more detail, but it's really powerful. This is essentially the node editor. This is what actually sits behind every single shader that you apply and assign through this interface here. Each of them in cycles, if you're using nodes, is represented by nodes and data flows from left to right to define the shader. And this unlocks a huge level of power and flexibility within Blender, and I want to touch on that later. The main thing I want to show you is that essentially this material, this smoke material here, combines a volume scatter 
and a volume absorption. They're kind of feeding into this ad shader, which blends them together. So that's kind of how you get things like smoke and fire and clouds. Finally, just very quickly, let me show you how to create volumetric light or light rays or God rays in Blender. For that, I'm just going to collapse this node editor. We don't really need to see it. Let's just in our 3D view, press Shift and S to bring up the snap menu. I want to move the cursor back to the center. It's going to move my 3D cursor back to the center of my scene. Shift and A. Let's add a new lamp and I'm going to add a spotlight. I'm just going to drag this upwards. So I'm just going to create a spotlight beaming downwards onto the smoke here. Right now, that's pretty hard to see. So with the light selected, let's just check the strength up to, I don't know, maybe 2000. Let's just see what that looks like. Yeah, it's not too bad. Maybe even, let's go 3000. Let's just really push this. And now in order to create light rays in a scene, essentially your whole scene, your whole world needs to kind of have dust particles floating around because you need something for this light to kind of bounce off and be diffused and scattered into the camera. Otherwise you can't actually see the light because the rays from this light up here, essentially just being shot down and that's why the scene is lit, but none of that light comes into the camera. So you can't actually see the light. In order to do that, you can actually apply volumetric shaders to the world of your entire scene. For that, over in the properties panel on the right hand side, let's come to the world icon, which represents your world. Under the surface options, let's select to use notes. And now you will also see the option to add a volume shader here. Let's pop open this volume tab and let's assign a volumetric shader to this slot. The one I'm going to use is a volume scatter because again, I want to represent particles in the air that that light can interact with and bounce off. Let's select the volume scatter note and everything is really dark. So if I bring this over a little bit, it's almost black. It's almost like night, but you can actually kind of see a little bit of light at the very top here and over here on the right hand side. It's just that the volume is too dense. All of the light just gets scattered everywhere and nothing gets to the actual camera. So what I can do, in this volume scatter node, I can just bring down the density. So let's make this 0.01 maybe. Let's give that a try. And that is actually not bad. By the way, this scene does take a little bit to preview render even on my machine. It's not actually that fast. I'm just speeding up the video here and there to, so you don't have to sit there and wait. But you can now actually see the beam of light coming from this little spotlight down onto our smoke and our monkeys. And the planes here on the left hand side, they're also creating a little bit of a halo. There's a little bit of a ray, like a big circle of light around them. Because again, that light interacts now with the particles in our scene and our volume scatter and bouncing around. They're getting scattered and some of them hit the camera and therefore you can then see them. Finally, I want to show you something really cool and that is that you can actually really easily make your volumes glow and emit light. This is super useful if you want to create effects such as fire or explosions or energy effects and you will see more of this in upcoming tutorials. So let me zoom in on the monkey head here in the middle. First of all, because rendering has gotten pretty slow, let's go back to the world. I'm actually going to remove this volume scatter shader here that's applied to the volume of the world. It does look really nice and funky to get all of this diffuse light being bounced off by the particles in the scene, but it does make the rendering pretty slow. That's a little bit quicker at least. Let's zoom in on the right hand side in our 3D view. I might actually press T to hide this tool shelf here so we get a bit more of our scene. Make sure I select the monkey head here in the middle that emits all of this smoke. Let's come over to the materials panel and let's assign a new material. I'm going to call this one monkey three. And as before, let's remove the surface shader altogether. And again, the monkey head will appear fully black if I let this render out for just a little bit. Then let's come to the volume shader for our monkey three material and let's change this from none. We're not going to use volume scatter or volume absorption. We're actually going to change this over to the emission shader. And this shader essentially emits light. So now you can kind of see the monkey head again. I'm going to let this render for just a second. And you may think, hmm, that's kind of boring, but let's change the color maybe to like an orangey red. And let's bump the strength up to maybe around about four. And now we can see how this material is actually casting light onto the floor. Maybe I'll bump the strength up all the way to 10 so we have a really bright and glowing material. And so this kind of now looks a little bit like the monkey head is glowing. It's a little bit on fire. And you can imagine this works really well with fire and explosion simulations because then the volume of your fire or your explosion can actually emit light realistically into your scene. It looks really cool. Anyway, I just wanted to show you because I think this is really powerful and it allows you to create some really interesting effects. We will be using a lot of this in upcoming tutorials for fire, smoke and explosions and a whole lot of other cool, more advanced effects. But hopefully this is enough to get you excited and get you started using volumetric rendering in Blender. And that's all there is to it. 
If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to watch more, just click these links over on the right hand side. If you want to support me in what I do in this channel, be sure to check out all of the links down in the video description. And as always, thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.